Thank you for joining us today for the program Bible Truth. Our study today will begin at uh, Luke 6, verse 12, and go through verse 19. That today's lesson is number 22 in our Luke series. Uh, the date is uh, June the 12th, 2024. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Is Acts 16:31. Now, uh, just uh, as, as we've been doing uh, recently, we're going to start off with just a few uh, questions about the last lesson. Uh, uh, now, what did the disciples do that, uh, that made the scribes and the Pharisees uh, mad? Uh, if, you, if you have your Bible there, which I hope you do, go to Luke 6, 1 through 5, and you'll see it. Well, his disciples, Jesus and his disciples were walking through a field, uh, through grain fields, and the disciples uh, took some of the grain and ate it. Uh, it says, and his disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate them, rubbing them in their hands. Well, the scribes and the Pharisees got really upset about that because it was on a Sabbath day. You see that earlier in uh, verse 1. Um, and so the scribes and the Pharisees asked, well, why do you do that? Well, Jesus uh, answered their question. How did he, how did he, how, what did he say? He says, um, have you not even read this, what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him. He actually went into the house of God. Uh, which was the tabernacle at that time. Uh, we, that's recorded, it's all recorded in 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6. You want to go back and look at it. Uh, and it was permissible according to the law that the Pharisees and scribes uh, claimed, to, uh, uh, claimed to follow uh, to the letter. And then David did it. Uh, Now the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath, uh, as it is uh, recorded right there in verse 5. And he said to them, The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Now in Mark it's worded a little bit differently. He says there, Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Uh, one other thing. Uh, from what Old Testament passage did Jesus claim Son of Man? Did he use that name Son of Man? Well, it's from from the uh, uh, book of prophecy of Daniel, uh, Daniel 7, verse 13. Uh, Daniel saw the uh, Son of Man, one like the Son of Man, coming in the clouds. A vision into the end times. Okay, well, let's go to uh, uh, the next passage, that, that we'll, uh, the passage we're going to look at today. Uh, Romans, uh, excuse me, not Romans, but Luke six eleven, and I will read uh, six eleven, uh, or not uh, six eleven. Sorry, we finished for eleven, so we're going to go to twelve. Uh, Luke six twelve. I'm going to read twelve through uh, sixteen to start with. Now it came to pass in those days that he went, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon called the zealot. Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. The traitor Judas. And notice there's another uh, of the twelve apostles also named Judas. Now it's apparent that Jesus had 
many disciples because it says uh, 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 says there was a, a crowd uh, well, we actually see the word crowd later on but there are many disciples and he chose 12 from this pool of disciples to be his apostles so there's a difference between a disciple and an apostle a disciple is a follower apostle is a sent one and specifically uh, we see the term the twelve, the twelve apostles. Uh, so, uh, apostles are disciples, but disciples are not necessarily apostles. Now, we previously seen the calling of Simon and Andrew, James and John, as disciples, as followers. Uh, we uh, read that before, that was back in Luke five. But now here are the twelve, and I want to say just a few things about the uh, about the twelve. Uh, as far as a comparison of three lists, there are three lists. Uh, actually, there's a fourth, and also we're going to look at three today. Uh, this one in Luke, in Luke six fourteen through sixteen. There's also one in Matthew, Matthew ten two through four, and there's one in Mark, Mark three sixteen through nineteen. Now just a, a little. Uh, comparison uh, and the reason it's so difficult to uh, memorize the names of the apostles, the twelve apostles is because they are called by different names sometimes, some of them are so anyway let's go Let's go at it All right, now uh, all three synoptics use the, the name Simon for Simon Peter uh, uh, Simon and Simon Peter, same person alright uh, Luke uh, and Matthew uh, refer to Andrew, the uh, brother of Simon Peter. Uh, in, the, in the order in which they appear is a little bit different too. I, I don't make a whole lot about that except there are three groups of four to get, to get the twelve. And the leader of each of three groups is the same one. Uh, Simon and then the second group of four begins always begins with Philip right? and that group includes Philip and uh, Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas now Bartholomew is called Nathaniel in John and so if you run across that name Nathaniel it's the same as Bartholomew alright now the the third of the three groups always begin with James, the son of Alphaeus. So there's a James, there's a James, uh, the brother of John, who is an who is an apostle. And there's also James, the son of Alphaeus. Uh, interesting thing about James, son of Alphaeus, is that uh, this James was possibly the brother of Matthew. Uh, go to uh, Mark, the second chapter. Mark 2, uh, and this is verse 14. As he, Jesus, as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office. So is it the same Alphaeus? We don't know for sure, but if uh, they had the same father, of course they were obviously brothers, and that would mean there were three sets of brothers among the twelve apostles. Alright, the second name in that third group is Simon the Zealot. Now, in Matthew, he's called Lebaeus. In Mark, he's called Thaddeus. So, same person, but three different names. It's, it's, so, it does get confusing there in that last group. Now, the eleventh name is Judas, the son of James. But in Matthew and Mark, he is called Simon the Canaanite. Simon the Canaanite. The last person is, the last one listed among the twelve is always Judas Iscariot. Uh, now Iscariot, that name Iscariot comes from uh, uh, where he was from, his hometown, which was uh, Kerioth in Judah, 
or in Judea, and he is the only apostle from outside Galilee. All the others were outside Galilee. You remember, uh, uh, they were, the apostles were accused uh, uh, at least a couple times in Scripture of being men of Galilee, unlearned men of Galilee. Uh, and uh, when Peter was at the uh, was at the fire warming himself right before the crucifixion of Jesus, uh, someone said that he was uh, his his Galilean accent gave him away. Okay, all right. Uh, so anyway, that's just uh, just a just a little background. Don't uh, hard to remember it all, but it is uh, easy to remember. Simon. And Andrew were brothers. James and John were brothers. Uh, possibly uh, uh, Matthew and James, uh, the other James, were uh, brothers. Uh, and then we've got the others also. But we'll look at that. We'll look at that some more later on. All right. Now the calling of uh, Levi or Matthew is to, as a disciple. We already saw that uh, last time. Jesus called two others to discipleship during his first Judean ministry, uh, discipleship, before he selected his apostles. Go to John, uh, the book of John, go to uh, chapter 1, in John 1, 43. Uh, the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. Uh, he was still in uh, in Judea, in the southern part of Palestine. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter, which was in Galilee. Now, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses uh, in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Then Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite in, indeed whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Well, Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, uh, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Uh, reference to uh, uh, the letter that uh, Jacob saw. Uh, extending to heaven and back down to earth way back in Genesis alright and back in uh, Luke now uh, in uh, Luke 6 right, verse 12 I notice uh, it says to pray that he went to pray verse 12 now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God now there are um, uh it, there are other instances. Uh, one, for example, is in uh, just back in Luke chapter three, uh, Luke three twenty one. Uh, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and that was uh, that uh, during the time of his uh, when he was baptized, he prayed then, and then he prayed uh, in. Uh, chapter 6 that we just saw and then we also look at uh, chapter 4 verse 42 now when it was day he departed and went into a deserted place and the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them but he said to them I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent so he prayed uh, also at that time and then uh, one more in 5.16. Uh, well, 5.16, that's the one that we just read. Uh, so he himself withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So, uh, or 5.16, uh, the uh, chapter 4. We just read in, out of chapter 6. Now, it appears that Jesus, uh, that Jesus had a prayer meeting 
uh, by himself, a deserted place up on the mountain. But it appears that Jesus had a prayer meeting by himself immediately prior to a major event. His baptism and also his selecting his twelve apostles. Okay, all right. Well, let's go to uh, verse uh, seventeen, uh, Luke six uh, seventeen through nineteen, and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. All right, it says that he uh, came down. Uh, that refers back to verse 12. Verse 12, now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain. Then 17, and he came down with them, stood on a level place. Now, this is very interesting right here. Uh, so, uh, some scholars refer to this as the uh, Sermon on the Plateau, a plateau, a level place. But now the Sermon and we won't actually get into the sermon itself until next time, but the sermon is very similar to the one that Matthew records in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, which is referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. So, there's a question there. Uh, is it the same sermon? And uh, uh, Matthew Luke said it on the mountain, Luke looks at it on a plateau, which could have been a part of the mountain, a plateau in the mountain could be, or it could be two different sermons with the uh, very similar material. I don't know. But Matthew's is so much longer because he, he included uh, a lot about the law because he's writing to, his, to a Jewish audience. And so they would, uh, uh, of course, be very partial to the law, and that would relate to them much better. Now, it does say uh, in verse 17 here, a crowd of disciples, a crowd, uh, a crowd of disciples. So there were, there were many. Now, in verse 19, uh, the word power is used there. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all. Power, all right. The Greek is dunamis. Dunamis, uh, from which we get the uh, uh, the uh, name dynamite. Now, I'd like for us to look at uh, power in some, other, in some other places in Scripture uh, just to do a little comparison uh, and also to realize how much power how much power? All right, now go ahead to Luke 8. And uh, let's start at verse 43. Luke 8, 43. And I'm going to read through 46. Uh, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? Now, verse 46. But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. This power, he could feel the power going out from it. So that means it's an ongoing, it's ongoing power, and it was going out from him. All right, now go to uh, Romans, uh, Romans, the first chapter, and uh, we'll look at verse 16, Romans 1, 16. Uh, this is Paul the Apostle speaking here, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power 
of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So it's the power of salvation. Tremendous power. Tremendous tremendous uh, in that it can save anyone who desires to be saved. Uh, Jesus came bec uh, because God is not willing that any should perish. All right, now, one more. Go back to Luke. This time, uh, look at chapter 9. Chapter 9, uh, verses 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. So, it's the same word dunamis, and it is his power to give. It's his power to give. Okay, well that's all we're going to cover today. In the next week we will get into the Beatitudes, and uh, it's a little bit different from uh, the Beatitudes uh, in Matthew, to which we're uh, most accustomed to uh, reading. But we're going to do a little comparison on that also. So, But uh, that will be uh, for next time. Well, thank you again to those who are joining us via YouTube. It is our prayer that this time together was meaningful to you and you learned more about God's Word. God alone can save, and He saves through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. It's recorded in John 14, 6. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity you've given us to come together and study your word. Uh, Lord, thank you for these words that uh, were written down by the Apostle uh, 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 not by the Apostle Luke, but by the writer, uh, the writer Luke, uh, Lord. Uh, but he wrote as did all the uh, writers of Scripture wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know that every word is true, and that uh, 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 you are willing, uh, you are not willing that any should perish, but willing that all would come to salvation. Lord, I pray that I uh, make that same prayer today, that any who are not saved, Lord, will receive that free gift of salvation before it's too late. And I ask all this in your name. Amen.